I'd like to welcome everybody to the 12th year of the Sprouts Lecture Series. And uh, we took a two year long sabbatical. Uh, we did an international sustainable con sustainability conference in November 2021, in which we had 19, 90, 90 different speakers from all across the world. And I think that became such an overload for us that, you know, editing all the material behind it, uh, about eight hours of uh, video, uh, online video recording. Uh, but the good part is that what came out of that was the uh, Climate Action Years Primer book, 200-page uh, mm -hmm. book. Uh, all the three authors of the book are here, Rahul Palekar and uh, Amruta Padgaukar. So, uh, yeah, we, of course, took a long break from the lecture series, which has been, this is the 12th year. Uh, but uh, what we did in the meanwhile is we wrote out a book which is now available for people to download freely uh, and distribute to institutions, schools and colleges. Uh, continuing in our uh, lecture series, we start this year with a fantastic uh, talk by uh, Dr. Arpit Bansal. I would uh, request Rahul to soon introduce him. Uh, but he's going to take us on a world journey. Uh, Arpit is very, very renowned, uh, uh, not only as a wildlife photographer, but also uh, more so as a surgeon. Uh, and he will know more about him soon. Uh, but we've had very long and old associations, uh, Sprouts and uh, Arpit. So welcome, Arpit, uh, to the 12th year edition of the Sprouts Lecture Series. And thank you for in, uh, accepting our invitation you know, to speak uh, at the lecture series. Uh, just to give you a background, uh, the, in the participants in the audience, we have a mixed age group of people. Uh, as you must have seen that there are people from all over the country uh, and uh, some others, I think, from other countries as well. Uh, so language, as I'd request you, you can uh, keep it mixed. Uh, if there are any technical words, do explain them a little more, uh, you know, so that uh, younger students, etc., can find it easily, uh, easier. Uh, now and I'm welcome. Uh, while I'm uh, chatting, there are people requesting me to join, so I'm just messaging them. So I'm sorry for a little bit uh, pre being preoccupied. No, 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 not at all. But uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Sprouts, thank Anand sir for our, I think, more than a decade-long association now. More, I think almost 15 years, close to 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I would be really de deeply grateful. And I'm very happy that uh, this journey of lecture series has been going on since 12 years. That's a huge, huge amount of time. And I'm really honored uh, uh, to be part of it. And I, ho I hope you all will enjoy the, today's session. Uh, so, uh, shall I start sharing the scene? No, let Rahul introduce you formally first and then we take on from there. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, good evening and uh, welcome everyone to uh, the 12th year of uh, Sprouts Nature Walk, uh, Sprouts Green Talks. And uh, it is my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Arpit Bansal. Dr. Arpit Bansal is an exceptional advanced laparoscopy and cancer surgeon and director of the 200-bedded NABH accredited Jeevan Jyoti Hospital in Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh. Besides his medical prowess, he is a renowned bird and wildlife photographer. His passion for nature conservation shines through his work making him a prominent TEDx and motivational speaker. Growing up in Prayagraj, Dr. Bansal nurtured a strong bond with nature. He mastered bird photography, capturing 1,125 species out of 1,349 Indian bird species, ranking him in the top 10 among India's top birders on ebird.org. Dr. Bansal seamlessly merges his medical expertise with his photography skills, advocating for health and nature conservation and inspiring many with his dedication to both science and the arts. So with that, I would like to welcome Dr. Bansal today uh, Thank you. to begin his talk. Thank you so much, uh, Rahul, uh, for such a kind, kind, and, in, in, kind words. So I'll just share my screen. Can you see the screen? Yes.
so my this birding journey is uh, obviously very close to my heart and it has been i started just a moment this is in between so this journey of mine started long back means uh, actually coincidentally i have been blessed with two different passions in life how to just a moment i want to minimize this so that it doesn't come in between what uh, hide this the bar which is floating hide floating ha huh? okay you can do a full screen now huh? with uh, this presentation yeah so this journey became strong uh, started uh, almost at the same time when i was doing my post graduation in surgery so i started uh, i did my M ms post graduation from nagpur and i all throughout my childhood i was always a nature person i was i would always prefer going on sunday mornings early mornings to go for, for nature places to see sunrise rather than party to late on a saturday night and even though obviously we stay in a social circle where we do end up partying saturday nights but all throughout my college days even if i used to party so my aim even if i used to sleep sleep at 2 in the night i used to get up at 4 or 5 to enjoy a sunday morning there was no sunday morning where i didn't use to spend time in nature maybe sunrise maybe where i am wherever i am so this was my uh, childhood always so uh, i was blessed to do my post graduation in surgery from nagpur obviously when you are studying surgery and doing a post graduation in surgery it's one of the most busiest time of times of your year and it is obviously very stressful lot of work lot of uh, stress lot of tension also so i made it a point uh, <clears throat> to devote at least one hour of my day during my ms uh, to for myself so i went started going for some walks and then slowly slowly my wife gifted me a pair of binoculars and there began my birding journey so i would like to <clears throat> say that just one this is not getting minimized huh? yeah yeah now it's okay so uh, first we'll talk about little bit of photography for art of photography photography is in just a click of a shutter it's vision patience and skill to capture a moment's soul and tell a silent story every photo has a story behind it and i always tell everybody that this art of photography is there in each one of us we just have to see it we just have to observe ourselves so every one of us holds the skill of photography it's matter of unlocking our patience awareness and and let, then let the vision and the magic unfold obviously everybody has a different vision so then no two people are most likely to click one same photo maybe birds maybe landscape there are so many things out there especially in nature you obviously you can photograph some portraits different things also but we will we'll talk about mainly nature in this because nature holds a special place in my heart so bird photography isn't just just about the lens and the focus it's the dance of patience and awareness capturing the fleeting poetry of the wings so birds are a subject which are very very interesting especially for a photographer's point of view because you can't ask it to pose you can't ask it to perch specifically on a on a branch which you would want to the lighting conditions are difficult and the you have to know the behavior of the bird and there are so many things involved in clicking a perfect bird picture so a, a bird photography is much more than just bird photography it's almost like a creative photography and in the realm of creative creativity bird photography is where imagination takes flight with feathers so uh, apt and uh, so now i would like to start during my ms days when obviously my i was a busy person uh, doing my profession learning new surgical skills and then when i started going out uh, so i got some uh, I made connections with some of my early friends uh, one i would name is kuldeep Kuldeep Shukla is one of my oldest birder friends. He was a manager at IDBI at that time, and we got connected in the field randomly. And this is one of the most beautiful things about birding. Then people whom you meet, you connect so deeply because they have have a similar like uh, mindset. And uh, so I have been blessed with thousands of literally thousands of birding friends all across the country and the world. 
and the amount of warmth and the reception which every one of uh, us give to each other even i it's it's overwhelming matlab it's like we are a family you know connected in a very very strange way through nature through birds and it is very beautiful so in a similar way during my when i was started my bird photography birding and bird photography journey in nagpur so uh, initially as i told you my wife gave you gave me a pair of binoculars and then i started seeing bird, common birds like kingfisher which i'll just shortly show and uh, from there my journey began and then the uh, as a so i am always a pas very passionate person since childhood and all throughout my school days college days there was one status that time it was used to be orkut and it was about my status has always been living life with passion so that's what i have always been telling to people during my all the lectures that in life obviously if your profession is your passion then there is nothing like it but even if it is or even if it is not you should still have a separate or a new passion to keep your life on your toes you, you the it's like uh, the when you have a passion then there is so much to live for so the in the same journey when i photograph uh, so this was a pair of painted stocks to get this picture i had i waited literally for 2 and a half to 3 hours because they were in coat shape they were uh, doing uh, intimate things with each other the pair of uh, painted stocks this was clicked in bharatpur actually one of the most uh, common birding centuries which uh, any new birder or new bird watcher visits so i was finally blessed with it and once i had this picture i obviously used to post on facebook do, do that day so through the facebook and through social media i got connected to anand pendikar sir uh, with whom my relationship with this started and then he helped me uh, do a lot of uh, bird photography exhibitions they they keep they keep used to hold a annual event in which i contributed some amount and obviously to uh, for the welfare of the Uh, nature and i loved the thing that uh, this we are talking i think 2010 or 2011 when he uh, got this after the event exhibition this photo of mine got published in midday mumbai in the center page so there my journey began and then i started photographing birds and this is a uh, himalayan blue tail and uh, ironically just uh, in the starting i wanted to sh sh uh, share that how us humans have slowly slowly start started to put nails in the in their homes in the nature forest are the homes and the rich biodiversity of our planet of our country is uh, so rich and but slowly slowly humans are leaving their footprints so this uh, picture tells the same story that it's a forest area but somebody put a nail there obviously slowly slowly encroaching into the forest this was my early days so raptors are birds of prey you usually take long flights and they eat uh, or hunt for other uh, small predators so this was a very very uh, rare uh, catch in and those early days this was clicked into early 2011 and this bird is called the white tailed eagle and those were the early birding days when uh, people were slowly slowly getting into birding and there were not too many platforms to learn from to track the birds so now i'll talk in front in uh, in the uh, coming slides about ebird also there are some amazing platforms like ebird where you can track the sightings of the bird you can submit your data and the best part is like i am doing this birding and bird bird photography for passion and while doing this i can contribute to science also so that i'll uh, talk about it in the, uh, in ahead so this was a very very rare catch and that time probably the sec only the second time when this eagle had come to india so as i was mentioning bird photography is not just clicking birds it's uh, creating an art of out of it so this was sorry arpit uh, to interrupt uh, uh, do mention the names of the birds also when you are uh, sure, sure, sure. yeah yeah, yeah so this was the himalayan blue tail the bird which is usually seen in the himalayas and this is the white tail eagle as i told this was clicked in 2012 And, and which uh, locations did you click them in also yeah, sorry yeah, sure. yeah yeah so this was clicked in a uh, in rajasthan a sanctuary called as tal chapar sanctuary it's near churu a small district in rajasthan and it's a very very small area where it's a actually a black buck sanctuary but uh, a lot of good congregation of raptors are there especially in winters so this was clicked in the month of december and 
as i was telling it was only the second time where this mighty raptor had come to india and this is probably one of the largest eagles which are found in india so eagles are birds of prey and they are they have the one of the largest wingspan in the upcoming slides they'll i'll talk one more interesting birds which has even bigger wings spring wing spans than eagle if you have heard if you have seen i am sure all of you might have searched or seen photos of eagles so this is the white tailed eagle and uh, the bird which comes to india is in not in the full plumage so the full plumage the bird is a little very different in colors this is the montagu's har harrier and this is clicked in the little run of kutch in uh, corner of gujarat so little run of kutch is a very very dry arid place it barren place if you get a chance to travel there then it's a beautiful beautiful landscape and uh, the bird life and overall uh, the nature life is very very scarce for there will be periods of up to hours where you won't spot a thing but when you sp spot a thing then you it usually co cooperates with you and you uh, if you give time and patience then you end up getting some good photos and there are thousands of stories of uh, uh, traveling in the run because uh, run uh, i am always also into driving and uh, so to drive a car in run it's like you're driving on endless road there are no paths and you just keep on driving and obviously you need to take a guide because it's not safe to venture out sometimes alone so this is the montagu's harrier and to photograph a bird against sunlight has had been a passion had been a dream when i had started so this was uh, when i got this shot uh, this was clicked at evening 5 pm almost sun was setting and uh, to get the light on the bird is a little bit challenging so uh, i'll just talk about a bird which is obviously uh, portrayed some in some other ways also kingfisher everybody knows apart from bear there are there's a bird called kingfishers and there is one or two common kingfisher which is there in uh, all our surroundings it's there in each and every city each and every town each and every place of india that is the white throated kingfisher this is the white throated kingfisher you usually see it at a small water body maybe a pond lake even nalas and all they keep there and they uh, look for lizards frogs or any small fishes also so this is so india as i we were talking about biodiversity india is blessed with 12 kingfishers and uh, so once i started birding i uh, this was one of the bird which you obviously you saw everywhere so you i started going there and i used to like the kingfisher a lot and then one fine day i saw uh, when i had a pair of binoculars i saw a pied kingfisher the, that kingfisher was complete i will come ahead it is completely black and white and that take me take, took me to another level that it told uh, it made me think that i want to see all the 12 kingfishers which are found in india so th that's where the early journey is that's why i'm showing this in the early part so this is the white throated kingfisher this one particularly is clicked in prayagraj in uh, sangam area but it is found in all all across the country this is a black cap kingfisher and this is a specialized uh, coastal area bird usually prefers coastal bird and it is comparatively a shyest kingfisher not uh, uh, not regular sightings at any particular place so uh, this one is clicked at sundarbans but uh, you see it sundarbans uh, sometimes even in goa or odisha so basically it prefers coastal areas but sometimes it is found in inland also it is used, uh, recorded many times commonly in mumbai also mumbai and surrounding areas uh, this one is clicked at sundarbans this is our jewel i call the jewel of a bird of india and this is the oriental dwarf kingfisher also called rufous back kingfisher and this bird is the smallest kingfisher it's less than if you close your first fist then it's less than the size of your fist obviously in a bird in a photo it's looking at from a little different perspective so uh, to photograph this was always a dream and uh, i have seen this beautiful beautiful bird with such glistening colors many many times now and uh, to photograph this when obviously it's hunting so during the uh, this is one of those kingfishers which breed during the monsoon so basically you can uh, clearly say that this is the bird of the monsoon for india specifically because usually birding in india because it's a tropical country bird photography birding in india 
is usually limited to winters but the more activities there in winters where the migratory birds from the northern from the poles because the poles in winters becomes very very cold so those birds can't bear that much cold in the there so the, the during those winter months they come to a little less colder places near the tropics like in and countries like india but this is these weird these kingfishers are uh, hardly any kingfishers are migratory in this and uh, this oriental dwarf kingfisher prefers to breed during the monsoon where obviously there is abundant of food around it abundant of lizards frogs different kinds of reptiles this one is the brown uh, brown uh, hooded uh, kingfisher and this is again clicked in sundarbans this one is a collared kingfisher again this is also a coastal bird it prefers coastal areas this this photo of the collared kingfisher is recently clicked in havelock island in andamans so if you want to see all the 12 kingfishers obviously you'll have to tra travel to uh, bits and bits of corners this is my cat who has now interesting in the birds suddenly so this is the collared kingfisher clicked at uh, havelock island and the glistening colors against if you get a pop, proper background then you will only understand the what colors this bird has so this was the bird which made me into the feeling of awe uh, once i first saw it so always usually during my early birding days I used to see white throated kingfisher and then one fine day i saw this pied kingfisher and then i went crazy about kingfishers in general and birds in general this one is clicked at jamnagar which is the southern uh, the east uh, where the western tip of gujarat and uh, we were just we were just uh, birding and we were in a car actually and then suddenly this kingfisher was sitting just next to it and i had literally had to take four five steps back to fit the bird in the frame and this is a full frame shot so i don't know why the bird the kingfisher was not shy from us and it was a very very bold bird this one is as called the common kingfisher but uh, these all the bird names in specifically in india which are named from common are actually pretty not that common as as we told as we discussed that white throated kingfisher is much more common than the common kingfisher so this these names come from uk nomenclature because you most likely the early birders early but ornithologists were based in the uk so uh, the, all the birds which are named common kingfisher common buzzard common babbler they are not so common and named accordingly in the from the uk uh, nomenclature so this is the common kingfisher clicked in prayagraj this one is a mangrove specialist kingfisher called the ruddy kingfisher so they it prefers mangroves and it is very very difficult because mangroves are dense forest and they hunt in the mangroves and they come out uh, to to click this you know have to know the tide timings because when so the best time is when there is between the low tide and the high tide then the these kingfishers will come out to hunt and then it's a good chance to get a photo this one was clicked at again andamans uh, a place called sipi ghat near andamans uh, in south of andamans near port blair i don't know what's with the cat today this one is the stock bill kingfisher again one of the most mighty big kingfishers as you can see from the beak only and this one was clicked in nagpur during my early days in 2012 around the same time when i clicked the painted stocks and this was the first record of uh, this stock bill kingfisher from nagpur at that time so during my journey in nagpur by photographing different birds that time like i was i'll about, uh, tell you about ebird uh, website which is a very very brilliant uh, initiative by the cornell lab from the us to maintain the scientific data to track the birds data so that time in a similar but a very small scale there was a website called nagpurbirds.org and there was a senior vet birder who is a very close friend also dr tarik saini who used to maintain this uh, website and uh, so my journey in getting to know the numbers of the birds started from there because uh, now every now and then since i did it consistently anything you if you do consistently you will definitely get the rewards so as i was telling during my pg days i consistently went for one hour a day and nagpur was a city which had so many lakes so we had very very different habitats and forests to explore so 
many birds used to be first for the nagpur district or the central vidarbha or central maharashtra district that time this i am talking in 2011 12 so that gave me the push gave me the passion inculcated this new passion that i want to photograph every single bird first in the country and then slowly slowly all the birds in the world so i would just give you a brief idea that in our country there are close to 1300 species of birds uh and i have been blessed by nature to photograph 1125 of them and uh, it's a big number to achieve and i have taken almost a decade and being a profession obviously my journey had comes with uh, come come with its share of breaks as well because i had to in between i had to focus too much on my profession which i am carrying at the moment also so uh, this bird Uh, uh, so because we found we started finding some new birds from the region so then my journey of the numbers behind the birds and then i start slowly slowly first 300 400 500 birds is not that difficult if you keep traveling to newer newer places but after 500 number of species then the real challenge begins and uh, obviously you need to travel to different isolated locations because out of these 1300 species of birds some are migratory some come only in the winters some are passage migrant means they don't per se come into india but for example they are coming from europe or africa and they are want, they are going to the russia or the siberian area so they'll just pass over our country and they'll just stop, take halts and stop for maybe 10 15 days in our country and different places and you have to catch them at th that time Th those are called passage migrants that can happen during the summers or during the monsoon or during the winters also so this is the pied king this is a crested kingfisher a uh, similar to pied bird but it has a crest and it is found in the himalaya himalayan belt this is the blue eared kingfisher looks a little bit similar to the common kingfisher but it has quite different features especially the blue near the ears this was this is the 12th kingfisher from india and this is the shyest and the rarest kingfisher from india and uh, hardly anybody has seen or have uh, two of them in one frame and this is clicked in namdafa national park namdafa national park is one of the eastern corners of india and it's a very very one of my most favorite national parks uh, which i have traveled all across the world and the country and uh, it's just bordering myanmar and you have to trek uh, you have to go into the forest you, and this was just a random sighting because uh, there was not regular sightings of this kingfisher and as i already mentioned this is a pretty shy kingfisher so to approach it it doesn't uh, it flies even if you if it sees any movement from far off and what happened that day i don't know they were actually three of them so they were uh, probably a courtship which was going on and there were three different kingfishers and i managed to get two in one frame this i just randomly put this is a P american pygmy kingfisher this is not from india this is from my recent uh, trip last year to costa rica so this is found found all across the american continent so during my birding days as i already mentioned i have been always a nature person so initial uh, my trips uh, all across the country uh, world i started taking my cameras uh, the gaze and then slowly slowly i keep kept my uh, my eyes open for birds so once you are into birding or bird photography or nature then it adds so much to your travels because you first of all you go to different specific locations to click them and then uh, if you are visiting any place if you you add so much to it which a normal traveler won't will absolutely miss so this are the famous ostrich from uh, south africa from all the african continent these are different kinds of starlings this one of this is a superb starling this is a this is a blue eared starling this is a nicobar pigeon which uh, is a very very rare pigeon again from Af south africa this is a pink ibis again from south africa different so you see how the different colors so nature once you know try, get to know nature closely you will get to know that what amazing colors does nature has and once you are photographing uh, birds obviously you will have uh, to you will see wonders like this also have you have has anybody seen uh, a round uh, rainbow uh, i would like to know your views later when we have a question and answer session 
even yours anand sir because this was in uh, africa when i was traveling with my brother and this was near victoria falls in uh, bordering south africa and zambia there there's a victoria falls and we we were just um, roaming there maybe with some birds and there was near the fall on a bridge i, I was amazed to see this uh, circular rainbow then during that journey so these are oyster catchers oyster catchers are again shore birds their beak they dig uh, crustaceans and other small creatures from the sand and to eat and a similar one is the eurasian oyster catcher which is very similar but a little different in colors which are which is found all over the asian continents and uh, this is a new zealand an uh, australian oyster catcher this one was a blue waxbill again one of the most brightly colored bird which i saw during my african trip i'm just sharing very very few images because if i keep sharing then this talk will never end this is a uh, crested eagle a large crested eagle and uh, this i clicked in again uh, south africa only and uh, i i clicked it from my car we were driving on the road and we saw this mighty eagle sitting nearby and we me and my brother we got down and we started clicking and then suddenly we saw two three more birders coming and uh, with their cameras and clicking and one of them told me that this uh, eagle is a very very rare sighting there and has they they've been seeing this eagle after 12 years so it was and i had no clue when i was clicking this eagle it was just an any e eagle for me because i didn't uh, have that much knowledge about african birds when i had gone there and other birds uh, uh, which uh, drew me very very closely is the penguins and uh, penguins uh, are again a very very interesting species of birds and interestingly did you know that the penguins are there only in the southern hemisphere they are not there in the northern hemisphere they are only there in the southern hemisphere these are a group of african penguins a group of Afri african penguins which you see very easily in uh, especially in south africa so th these are a group of african penguins uh, it, this is near cape of good hope in south africa and uh, so they keep uh, they just come out from a swim this is a family of african penguins the small ones who who the mother and the father were raising so uh, with penguins once i saw saw the african penguins i again i have this new uh, this one of my passions to see all the penguins of the world but i have uh, yet not seen too many of them but new zealand uh, was mine and pooja's honeymoon actually but uh, you would imagine that we ended up birding almost every single day on our honeymoon and it was a 14 day trip to new zealand and we drove all across the new zealand from top to bottom all the north island and the south island and even the stuart island which is below the south island and it was wow. a wonderful wonderful trip to uh, i'll t talk about it new zealand when you talk about new zealand you are obviously be blessed with landscapes and the clouds this is again one of the hot geysers which was there in new zealand arpit uh, one point yeah uh, uh, about the uh, oyster catchers you know they had uh, tags on them can you talk a little bit about what those tags were yeah sorry yeah, sorry so, yeah. so yeah. see Banks, the, yeah. as you can see there are rings on the legs of these oyster catchers so these are uh, to study the behavior to study the migratory pattern uh, maybe some injured bird is caught so ornithologists and people who study birds who study uh, they do this called procedure called ringing it's done in a very not so harmful manner for the birds probably when they are injured or they are caught somehow in nets so this ringing they give a number and sometimes it is geo tag sometimes it is satellite tags also and it helps them to know what is the trend what is the migratory route of this bird and uh, there is a birds i don't know i have, might have not included in this uh, presentation skimmers which we know indian skimmers indian skimmers are one of the very rarest uh, endangered birds which are found in our country also in, and the numbers are decreasing and i am sitting in prayagraj so people always used to believe that they migrate in uh, they breed in chambal but uh, and the it has a very special route that nobody knew exactly knew how what's the migratory pattern sometimes the sightings are as far uh, west as uh, jamnagar also 
and they are known to be found up to Bangladesh. So this is the belt where the Indian skimmers are usually found. From, from and uh, they breed during the uh, just before the monsoons. Mainly everybody knew Chambal in MP is the breeding ground. And then uh, recently in the last few years we have found big breeding colonies of the skimmers in 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 Allahabad also in Prayagraj. And I have photographed a lot of tagged birds. So with that and with BNHS, I have been I have friends across BNHS who are working specifically for skimmers. So I have shared a lot of tagged birds with them. And then we come to know a lot of because all those tagged birds are geotagged. And uh, so the, my uh, friend Praveen, who's in BNHS, when I, once I uh, to, uh, send her the tagged bird or photo of the skimmer, and she told me that she had only put this tag in on uh, one of the skimmers. And she was amazed to, uh, very happy to see that the bird is doing well, even almost after seven to eight years of the ta initial tagging. So this is a bird of two, uh, called Tui and from uh, New Zealand, from the New Zealand, again, parrot kind of a family. And my love for penguins continued during my New Zealand trip. This is the world's rarest penguin called the yellow-eyed penguins. Very, very few are left. And we were blessed to see one basking out in the sun. And this, this is again the yellow-eyed penguin. And see how the pro process of molting is happening in this individual. So these penguins, they mold their feathers every season. And then the uh, new feathers comes to protect them from extreme cold. This is again one of the little blue penguins. This is a uh, species of penguin which is the smallest of, of them all. This was again seen during the New Zealand trip. So New Zealand trip opened a new uh, realm to me because uh, all we all know that obviously birds exist in the sky and we, to see birds, you have to go to forests, mountains. But did, did you know that there is an uh, entire group of birds which never uh, to come to land and those are called the pelagic birds and they live all throughout their life only in ocean. So they prefer ocean, they sleep on ocean, they eat on ocean and they literally spend their entire lives on ocean except for breeding. Obviously breeding, they visit small nearby islands, isolated islands in the where there is no disturbance. And so the, in there, in New, this is again one of the beautiful landscapes from uh, New Zealand. So this is one such pelagic birds and uh, one of my favorites also again, this is a Buller's um, uh, albatross. So this, maybe in this picture you might not be seeing, but albatross, the northern uh, and the southern giant, uh, southern royal albatross are the species of albatross which has the largest wingspan of any bird. They are huge birds in the middle of the ocean, uh, flying like almost literally like an aircraft. Such big and. Look at this specific, specialized beak. So they hunt during the oceans and it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, large creature to look at. These are um, uh, some other birds. This is a Cape Petrel. It's like a kind of a pigeon, but its beak is entirely different and specialized for being a pelagic hunter, pelagic bird. This is again a kind of a pelagic bird called the Northern Giant Petrel. These are all from click during one trip in uh, New Zealand, one couple of trips in New Zealand. So pelagic, uh, when you do pelagic birding, uh, we have started doing pelagic birding in India also these days, because India also has a huge expanse of cost, coastal areas. And uh, since my goal was to try and see as many birds in and photograph in India, so obviously that can't be completed without going into the sea, going into the ocean or doing some pelagic trips. But all of these pelagic love and trips started from the news started from New Zealand. So. In these birds, usually you have to go at least 10 to 15 kilometers or at least 10 to 15 nautical miles into the sea to start seeing some of these birds. And pelagic birding, especially in India and all across the world, is, is a very, very scarce birding, similar to the great run of uh, little run of catch, which I was mentioning. Because uh, there is no trees, there is no shade. You, you just uh, venture out in, into the ocean. And obviously, there are some areas where <coughs> some birds prefer and uh, the people who are taking you they know the latitude and the longitude of that but imagine as a 
general observer, you will not see anything. There will be no landmark, just plain open wide ocean. And you just go them and you sometimes they'll be like uh, for six hours, you will see, you won't see a thing. And this was one trip uh, in Kaikura in New Zealand where, uh, so there are albatross as we were talking about. Albatross are giant sea uh, uh, birds and there are around 20, 20, two odd species of albatross all across the world and uh, there were when during this uh, pelagic trip it was a small boat and around 10 15, 10 12 other birders were there from different people, uh, places some were from uk two of them was from australia one couple was from south africa during this trip so everybody had uh, was telling me that seeing an albatross is very difficult and if you're lucky then you'll see one or two species of albatross but during this trip, we saw seven different species of albatross. This is again, again a uh, white chin petrel. Again, petrels are smaller birds, not like the albatross. And they swim just on the surface of the ocean and they hunt uh, for, close to the sea, close to the surface. This is the royal southern royal albatross, which I was talking about. There are different kinds, northern and southern royal albatross. This is one of the mighty, mighty big ones. So see here, this one is the Buller's Molly Shang kind of albatross. And the other one is the, no, no, the Northern Giant albatross. And this is the black one is the Northern Giant petrel, which we had saw in the other photo. So this was some things about New Zealand. Uh, so now my birding gen journey in India has been uh, really, really great. And... Uh, Last uh, three years, I had been literally going places and I've been, I had been doing uh, something called twitching. So twitching is basically uh, through birding network and through social media, through our WhatsApp network, you know that one bird has been sighted specifically at this place. And then you make a trip ra randomly immediately because the, as we were talking about passage migrants, so those birds might not stay at a place for too long. So you come to know, so my recent, one of the recent twitching trips was, uh, my, it's not, it's not in this presentation, but I'll just tell you because the story is very, very interesting. There's, there's a bird called buff breasted sandpiper. So if you might be knowing sandpipers are shore birds, uh, and this one is called the buff breasted sandpiper had come to India only once before this. And that was 12 years back and a small town near Kerala in a place called Kannur and, uh, it had come just for four to five days. Uh, uh, Dr. Jane Thomas, our close friend, who's a good birder from Kerala, he had photographed it that time. And this time uh, in October end, he again, this was cited at the sim same area, same patch of land. So I was mesmerized to see how uh, a bird 12 years down the line is, obviously it might come, had come before also, but uh, recorded 12 years later, and the lifespan of that bird is also not made, uh, 8 to 10 years, approximately. So maybe it had passed uh, to the generation, the location. So this is very, very interesting to read about how the migration happens, how these birds, for example, this sand uh, buff-breasted sandpiper, how this landed almost exactly in the same patch 12 years later. Probably not the same bird. So uh, because of twitching, I was uh, in 2023 last year, uh, early last year, I was successful in completing my thousand birds from India. And, the, and I had been launching a calendar for the four, four years in a row. This year also the calendar has come out. And this last year, the calendar was called the a thousand tails. So I'll just go through the 12 selected birds for the year. <coughs> This cover image is of the snow part. Arvind, why don't you take a breath, have a sip of water and then continue? <laughs> yeah, I'm continuously yeah. talking, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys are enjoying and uh, learning new things, new words like twitching. Uh, there are a few questions, Arpit. Do you want me to take it now or should we yeah, come yeah, we to can it? Take, we can take. We can take. We, okay, we, we okay. can take so that it will be an interactive and not a, just right. a monotonous session. Yeah. So one of the questions was that uh, how did you get into birding and uh, a little bit about that later on, if you can share, you don't need to go into it immediately. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, think that's with such a hectic schedule as a surgeon, how do you manage to keep the balance between, uh, you know, surgery and uh, birding? That is, that, uh, uh, see, I, I was, I was telling yeah. about earlier. So if you have a ah. passion, then you will end up taking out time. 
obviously mm-hmm. during my and i'm not just a surgeon i am a director of a 200 bedded hospital so running a hospital in up is a very very herculean task so all my birding experience uh, journeys and my trips have been basically weekend birding maybe friday saturday sunday i sneak out from work and and i go so that's what has been my journey uh, usually birding and bird photography you correlate with patients and spending hours which obviously i also did but by god's grace and by nature i was blessed to get them pretty early i think because people for this kind of a shot people uh, spend days and many people who are into birding they have a luxury of time which i don't have so they mm. spend uh, days into the uh, any forest obviously but uh, i i don't have that luxury any but, specific uh, challenges that you faced Uh, for uh, traveling or for this bird bird for 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 bird photography or yeah so as a, as a doctor as a doctor ha huh? as a doctor there was no challenge apart from the challenge the biggest challenge of time time, huh, huh. time. and to manage time i don't know how i did it if you ask me a one particular question how i did it i don't know i just did it because i had the passion so i juggled between the two and i was telling uh, i was travel i used travel on friday saturday sunday so especially like i was talking about that twitching bird the sand piper uh, so i co- came to know i was in alabad i had planned i had surgeries i had full work schedule going on then suddenly one of my friends sudeshna who's also amongst the top 10 she told me that this uh, sand piper is come very very rare so I, i obviously knew about it it's very very rare so i had to do it but now so, so somebody I'm... there's a connecting question to this you should get an answer uh, uh, is that when you do birding and when you do for you know surgery so the, uh, the question asked by uh, kumari pallabi is that uh, like you you are working in the medical field literally 24 by 7 surgeries can be at any point of time Correct. so do how do you manage take care of your health and do you rest or do you have any super power is what she is asking <laughs> working so my super power is nature for me my super power is nature when i'm and obviously when i'm saving doing advanced surgeries which you by the way i have a health advocacy channel also on instagram and i uh, tell lot of uh, one minute reels for in, i spread lot of awareness about uh, health in a this generation's uh, scene like reels so that people can get to awareness because during my last 7 to 10 years of medical practice especially in alabad i found that many people are very very immature and unaware and uh, like being a cancer surgeon detected very late so i decided mm-hmm. to make this awareness channel and which you can where you can follow me and where i also showcase some live surgeries like one in one minute uh, doing live hernia laparoscopic surgeries some cancer surgeries so okay one last question before you can come to back to your thing uh, this is by tracy he is asking can you tell us a little bit more about blue penguins eye color blue penguins eye color okay ah. Ah. so this see the eye color as you uh, it's not a very great photo because it's old photo i have, may have to edit it again the eye color is yellowish pale only and uh, the bird is slightly bluish tinge and the face is obviously whitish it's shy- in this photo it's looking like it's shining too much but it as i was standing eye color is pretty standard uh, yellowish pale but the more important thing to know about this species it's the smallest of all penguin species across the uh, world okay thank you back to you so ha so i'll tell you about this wonderful calendar which i made last year and the calendar was aptly named a thousand tales because this bird of snow partridge was my thousandth bird from india and i had uh, so this is a snow partridge as you might have guessed it stays stays in the snow and it stays in high elevation mountain areas all across the himalayas even the western as well as the eastern himalayas and i had done a lot of western himalayas birding uttarakhand some himachal sometimes even in ladakh and uh, in adjoining areas in himachal as well but uh, i don't know somehow i had missed this bird all throughout my western himalayas and birding and this bird finally i got at sela pass which is one of the highest passes in arunachal pradesh and uh, incidentally when we were birding a very close friend called with uh, with me who was arka arka sarkar uh, and uh, so we were birding and uh, sela pass as i told you is a very high uh, altitude pass so this was a snowstorm was happening there and uh, this was one of our big targets there 
when everybody was sitting inside the uh, car sipping tea and saying ki aaj to aaj ka din to waste ho gaya itni snow hai then i decided ki i have come this far and leaving my so much important work and somehow manage my time so as i was telling no, most of been trips my have been friday saturday sunday but exceptionally some trips been too far of destination maximum length of my trips have been 6 to 7 days i have stretched it to 5 to 6 days really and this was one such trip so i out of that one important day i could not let it waste even because of snow so then i told everybody i am going out i am walking into this uh, little bit mother the snow was not very heavy snowfall but very heavy wind very chilly wind and slight snowfall was going on so i got out of the car i obviously it was chilly but i said i am walking i am going to do birding i don't care so then i uh, luckily i kept on walking and one of my friends uday he joined me uh, in the, so then we walked and we trekked a little bit near the pass and we were we saw this group of uh, snow partridges and i was thrilled and it's not my it was my hun- uh, thousandth lifer and then uh, after waiting patiently behind a lo- uh, behind a rock a uh, little bit snowfall also stopped and it started calling and it i slowly slowly approached and i got this almost a full frame of this bird calling so that was a very very miraculous and a very very happy shot for me and this is again a flock of birds slightly smaller than crow it's called the grandala electric blue colors and when they, when when you see them in snowfall it's mesmerizing to see this is again shot exactly in the same day and then this is the 999th bird just before the snow partridge as i was telling so this was the bird actually when i first got out of the car for in the snowfall when actually snow was falling and uh, there were no activity because snowfall windy and suddenly i saw this flock of grandala sitting far behind a little low so i started to trek and obviously i fell also in because it was snowy but i finally managed to get this dream shot of the grandala in the snow this was a himalayan woodpecker a uh, click near kangan near shrinagar and uh, i i had gone specifically on one of my twitching trips there for a bird called evermens red start it's a red start is a small bird like a robin family kind of a bird it's a migratory bird there are there is a bird called black red start which is pretty common and it comes all across the country during winters but this evermens red start is was a new find for uh, india uh, recently by our kashmir friends uh, irfan uh, who is a very close friend he he found this bird so everybody started going there now it's a regular sight there in uh, winters but uh, not a very rare easy bird to find so this that was one morning where we had gone to kangan near irfan's house uh, it was a open barren area obviously very chilly this was the month of january and january in shrinagar obviously is very cold uh, so and uh, i was we were looking for the evermens red start and then suddenly this uh, bird landed on a very close by tree so i was lucky to see it it was almost end of the day so probably taking its supper taking its dinner this sunbird again is called the van hasselt sunbird or the purple throated sunbird and it's one of the rare one of what it's the rarest sunbird of the of our country and uh, this was initially only found in bangladesh and there was no uh, hard matlab till a few years back there was no uh, this was not a bird found in india then few of our bird uh, close friends from a small village called uh, karim ganj they have been really re- revolutionizing in birding there uh, just a minute so rejoice is the birder main birder there who helped us get these birds this basically he and uh, along with his team there he st- uh, found this bird very close to this karim ganj is a very small village in assam very very close almost 20 kilometers from bangladesh border and there is a evergreen rich rain forest you have to walk in uh, small streams to get to amazing patches of forest there we so there is a four to five birds specifically like the black headed bulbul and this uh, vanessa sunbird then uh, a specific kind of a mana and uh, other birds which are only seen in india in those that small patch of rainforest so to see those birds to tick those birds as lifers so what's a lifer in birding i'll just for those who don't know 
लाइफर इज अ बर्ड uh which you see in the or see your photograph in your life for the first time it's called a lifer so to check tick those lifers you have to go to a place called karim ganj if anybody anybody wants to travel any time i would be happy to help and connect to other people so as i was telling you this bird as you can see the purplish magenta colored throat uh, to get the perfect shining of the uh, magenta purple colored throat the light has to properly fall at the angle because otherwise it will look black in many of in hundreds of my photos half throat is black half throat is magenta and only one or two of these photos i finally managed to get the proper purple throat this these are one of my again one of my uh, one of kinds of birds which i really love these are called wren babblers wren babblers are small small fidgety birds and they usually remains slight in densely inside undergrowth of forest and uh, in bushes undergrowth of forest and uh, most rain babblers are seen in the extreme north uh, northeast corners of a country some are obviously seen in the western himalayas as well there are approximately 10 to 12 species of rain babblers in india and i think only i am left to photograph couple of them so this mishmi rain babbler is a specific rain babbler to mishmi hills mishmi hills is again a uh, very very lovely and one of my most uh, favorite birding destinations in arunachal pradesh again and it's a very very beautiful uh, habitat uh, so you can hear them very very much commonly than see them and i've gone gone to mishmeels three or four times and it was the only this time when i'd gone this uh, in may 2022 when i this mishmeer and babbler decided to come on a dream perch so on that time i noticed one uh, very interesting behavior about birds is that uh, during breeding season some birds are very very active and they uh, tend to give you more photos so this was again may so most of the resident bird species they breed around be just before the monsoon when there is plenty of food for the raising their young ones so this was the mishmi ren babbler in mishmi hills arunachal pradesh this was the cover image which we already spoke about this is a nut hatch species again this nut hatches are very very interesting birds i'll show you one indian nut hatch photo later uh, this is called the beautiful nut hatch and again clicked in mishmi hills so this was a, again a very very special bird called as the uh, vivid neel tawa and now it has been split and the new name is chinese vivid neel tawa and uh, again this neel tawa was very very rare and thanks to ebird which i will be talking shortly uh, now people know a little bit of trend of this bird otherwise this was uh, the sightings of this bird was very very erratic and nobody knew to how how to plan to get to click this bird because they so ebird is a platform online platform where when you are, when I, i am out birding when you are out birding when you are birding in your house when you are birding in your areas you can uh, it's a very very simple easy to use platform where you can just put the sightings on a easy to use app what you see and it is associated with a another app called merlin which is for new people who don't know too much too much about names of the birds so that will help you about bird names so this neel tawa was clicked in the same may trip to mishmi hills and as you might see there is a lot of rain behind it so it was a rainy day but still we uh, got this uh, rare uh, glimpse of this neel tawa this was the scarlet finch again one of those uh, later i'll show one more interesting fact fact about this strikingly red beautiful bird uh, from the finch family finch is finch are basically seed eaters and uh, to uh, get to photograph this that openly and this bird was uh, this is again a full frame shot no not a crop has been done again this has been shot near mishmi hills mishmi hills is basically a very very large area from 10 kilometers to 65 kilometers the whole area uh, the height of the altitude of that area is and it's a winding road and uh, the habitat keeps on changing so does the number of uh, different kinds of species which you find there so uh, on a beautiful good day and uh, you can easily see more than 100 200 species in one day in mishmi hills and that to very good species and good numbers good colors good variety so this bird if i talk about every bird then i think it will become 8 o'clock today then uh, so this is a red neck phalarope 
this is again a, one of those passage migrants which I was talking about. So this bird is not really a passage migrant. It's some, it winters in India on the western co coast like uh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, sometimes in Pune, neighboring places of Mumbai also. But usually it stays around the west coast of India. And uh, I had previous to this, uh, it was a very special bird. I don't know why I liked uh, this bird and I wanted to click it. Listen to this. This is a very, very interesting story. So I had done many trips to Gujarat, Rajasthan, where this, this bird is usually sighted around, around the time when it is usually sighted. So one thing which I would like to highlight is that if you are do, get, planning to get into birding, bird photography, then it is important. One is to get the equipment. Second thing is how to plan. One thing is you can go to new random places and just start birding. Once you get a little bit mature, you need to know what you want to click. And then you have to plan the months accordingly, which month or which time of the year, which place at which time of the year you should go for which bird. So it is like that. So I had done planned trips, <clears throat> not specifically for this bird, for, for other birds as well. <clears throat> but targeting this as one of the birds. And I had missed this bird on up to four to five different occasions. And one fine day in uh, May, uh, to, uh, May 2022. So this uh, <clears throat> in Allahabad, I was uh, it was a normal routine work week for me, and there was some good curly kingfisher which uh, our friend Chandan sir has had been clicking near Chatnag Ghat in Allahabad. So I thought that uh, I've not birded since a few days. Let's go. Let me go and have a look at those curly kingfishers. And two three days back, they were Chandan sir and two three other local birders were there. And I went there with a friend of mine called Shruti. She is also a very good avid birder. So we went there, and I suddenly saw this bird. And this normal in this non non breeding plumage, the red neck will be looking just plain white and black. There is again a bird. Again, I'll show about it. So red neck phalarope in bleeding breeding plumage. I got crazy just the thought of it, uh, looking at it. And once I clicked it, I was almost. I knew it, it was a redneck fellow rope as soon as I clicked it, but I was not believing my eyes. So it was, it was, it ultimately came to me to Allahabad and it was ultimately the first ever record of this bird in UP in Uttar Pradesh. This is the Kashmir flycatcher from Kashmir, from Srinagar. It's one of the iconic birds, but it uh, only uh, stays in Kashmir during the uh, summers and uh, then in winter it migrates to South India. This is the Siberian blue robin, uh, and again one of the very very rare kind of bird from India, and initially found not uh, to be found in India, and then again one our friend rejoiced from Karim Ganj helped us get this. This is again shot in Karim Ganj Assam. This again was a dream dream perch of the bird called Naga Ren Babbler. Last we uh, previously I showed you Mishmi Ren Babbler that is only. Specific to Mishmeels, Nagar and Babbler is only specific to Nagaland. So to photograph this bird, again, this is again Ren Babbler. So it stayed in the bush. It is a fidgety bird. So during the row, during the near the Khonoma National Park where we were birding for three, four days, we heard it at least hundred times. But the bird, this bird decided not to come out. Then my birder and my guide and my close friend Rufik, uh, who told me that if you want to, you really want, I to, uh, want to click this bird, then we'll have to track a little bit high. I said, I am doing, I'm willing to do anything for, to get the good photo of the Nagar and Babbler. So you told me, are you sure? I said, yes, it'll be a steep track and you might get definitely leech bites also. So, uh, I was not very nicely prepared for a lead with lead socks and all that. So we decided to start the trek. Me, Rofiq and my wife, Pooja, we three were there and we, uh, went, we trekked for almost an hour. And we reached to a dense uh, stream up in the mountains. And then they, after from there, there was a very, very steep climb. Kind of a natural uh, staircase into the Himalayas. Uh, so then we started climbing and Pooja decided that she'll not be climbing from there. So me and Rufik, we started to carry forward. And uh, there were good calls of this bird. And Luckily, I got this amazing shot of this Nagar and Babbler in a moss, which I, I don't think anybody in the world has this kind of a shot of this bird. And uh, when I came down, then I had 12 leech bites on my both the feet. There were six almost in each. And while clicking, I had no clue and I had no pain because I was so engrossed, engrossed in clicking the bird 
the pain of the leech was, was not felt at all. So this year, now I'll come, I'll talk a little bit differently about this. Now this is a, this current 2024 calendar and this year I decided to name it wing wonders. So uh, in early 2023, I was uh, blessed to travel to Costa Rica again with my wife, Pooja. And uh, I went bonkers when I went to Costa Rica because never in my life had I ever imagined to see fluorescent colors in nature and all around us. Uh, I'm sure you all might have heard about toucans. And so this is one key called bird called keel bill toucan. And uh, in this calendar, uh, during my launch also, I told uh, launch of this calendar, I showed a very, very interesting uh, correlation between the birds found in Costa Rica and the birds found in found in India. So as you all, all know that Costa Rica is a similar tropical uh, country, tropical rainforest, sim not exactly similar, but similar to India uh, and the, in the South Asian tropics areas. So there are... Uh, during evolution, obviously those birds that developed evolved differently and these uh, are Indian birds evolved differently. So there are not one, not two. There are so many examples of birds which are correlated very, very interestingly. And yet there are entirely different species. And this process, is, this similarity is, uh, is explained by convergent evolution. So when the evolution, when the dinosaur era and when the birds era started, then the different habitats, the but because the temperature, because the environment, because the rainforest was similar between the two areas, the co Costa Rican forest and the Indian forest we are comparing. So the evolution was so, so similar that the Costa Rican or the American continent has birds called the hum, like the hummingbirds. This, is, this bird is the white-throated mountain gem. This is kind of a hummingbird. And this is a similar con species in India called the green-tailed sunbird. So like Indian areas, we have the sunbirds and we don't have the hummingbirds. And in uh, Costa Rican and American continent, we have the hummingbirds and there are no sunbirds there. So similarity, they are both uh, very, very vital for the environment, for pollinating flowers, for spreading the pollination of our fruits, for maintaining the biodiversity of trees and different plants. Uh, so similar behavior, similar feeding behavior. The difference is that the sunbird usually feeds when they after sitting down and the hummingbird as you can see in this picture they, they feed while in the air and also hummingbird the flap of the wings is the speed is more than 8000 per second so imagine the, the uh, speed of the flapping of the wings is exceptional for hummingbirds and to capture them is another difficult another interesting fact about hummingbird i'll show you when the next hummingbird photo come so these these are a pair of king uh, king vultures this is again for the February photo. So I, I'll, I'm going uh, ca day calendar wise uh, as per my current calendar. And this is one uh, vulture. When we talk about it's again, it's a bird of paradise. It's scavengers. Usually it's no, they don't kill. They hunt, they, they eat dead animals, dead prey. And this is probably the most beautiful vulture, uh, very different words to call a vulture beautiful because Vulture, when you talk about mostly everything gross comes to your mind. But as you can see, these king vulture vultures are a pair of king vultures. They were literally romancing in the wild. And I was fortunate to get the uh, click at the right moment. And they are, I am sure everybody finds it beautiful. Similar vultures in our country is the, uh, one example is the white rum vulture, which are both critically engendered. So this is from South Costa Rica. This is from India. Bhopal in India. So this, I was telling you, this is again a strikingly red bird. And this is, again, I told you, I showed you this scarlet finch from Mishmeels. Look at the similarities in the colors. Again, beautifully red, strike, uh, striking red color. And this bird is a, called the summer tanager. Uh, tanager is a robin kind of a family. And uh, it's the, one of the only fully complete red blood, uh, red bird in the all of the American continent. Again, clicked in Costa Rica. These are again called the uh, Arakaras, crested Arakaras, the bird is called. And uh, they are similar to toucans, but smaller than toucans. So they are in the toucanet families and they are similar to some hornbills in India. So again, there are fruit uh, similar similarities between this Arakaris and uh, this is the Malabar grey hornbill. 
what is the similarity they both are the fruit eating birds they disperse fruit uh, seeds by eating fruits and uh, throwing off seeds uh, thereby maintaining again the biodiversity of our uh, forests and to click this bird again was a challenge because they, there are these are a pair of uh, arakaris playing uh, on this uh, branch of uh, on this branch but i wanted to click when they faced op absolutely opposite to each other and i was I, i managed to do it up after a span of almost an hour this is the malabar grey hornbill from kerala from india this is for may again now this bird again is a very very interesting and i i saw in a uh, for in a book uh, in and i all told my guide that i really really wanted to see this bird <clears throat> because of this strikingly colorful bird again and it is called the golden broad chlorophonia and i again in a rain and i was blessed to get it uh, eating contrastingly red colored berries similar behavior is the fire tail mysornis this is from uh, near uh, arunachal pradesh a place called mandala mandala is near sela pass was quite far but near in similar habitat and in in this bird uh, the fire tail mysornis the white dots nearing their chin are the basically pollens of the flowers this is how these birds pollinate different flowers they eat uh, they feed from one male flower and then pol they pollinate and take the flower sorry female flower and they pollinate the male flowers that way so similarities again this is again the keelbell took in the cover image to capture it in rain was my dream and i am blessed uh, grateful that i got the perfect picture which i dreamed of and again the convergent evolution so shows us how they are related to the hornbills of india so like the sunbirds and the uh hummingbirds in india these are the hornbills which are found in indian and the asian continent and the toucans which are found in american continent there are no toucans in the american continents and there are no hornbills in the american continents so hornbills again to asian continent even up outside india and these toucans are in american continent even out outside costa rica also this is again a uh, raptor bird called the yellow headed karakara uh, again a uh, similar to bird uh, yellow headed karakara clicked in costa rica similar to a black kite which is found in india in plenty it's very very similar behavior similar size similar bird of prey this is the crested karakara again a bird of, uh, a raptor and similar to one of the uh, big uh, raptors in india this is the white tailed eagle which initially i showed you on in flight this is the same mighty raptor the white tailed eagle from the same place uh, tal chapar in rajasthan and this is crested karakara from costa rica this is again one an, another example of the convergent evolution this is the bird is called the turquoise broad motmot this is a motmot and is similar to clicked in costa rica similar to a bee eater which you find in india this is a blue cheek bee eater again similar behavior similar uh, feeding behavior similar uh, habitat but in costa rica the tail of this uh, motmots are entirely different from the bee eaters so this is a blue cheek bee eater clicked in prayagraj and this is a turquoise broad motmot clicked in costa rica these are again uh this this bird is called the brown hooded parrot and to capture a pair of them looking at me was again a beautiful shot to get and similar so these are parrots which are found in costa rica and similar the only parrot species to be found in india uh, there are lot of parrot but mo mostly like those are the rose ring parakeet alexandrian parakeet so those are parakeets the only parrot which is found in india is the vernal hanging parrot and this one is clicked in a uh, farm near pune and so uh, these are maize and bajra plantations which they uh, these birds have particularly a time so in all only september october you see this beautiful vernal hanging parakeet uh, vernal hanging parrot sorry in these fields and th in that time everybody goes to click these parrots in the bajra fields and this is the orange hooded parrot from costa rica i'll show you if i have a bird of the same image in flight when i show you then i'll talk about it so this is again a white neck jacobin hummingbird this is again a hummingbird so another interesting fact about hummingbird which i wanted to share was 
it's the only bird i always told you that uh, i already told you that the flapping of the wings is super fast and to click it to freeze the wings like we have i have done it in this uh, picture is very very difficult and uh, the so the only bird which can fly backwards is a hummingbird and the sunbirds don't fly backwards and similar to this this is the uh, lawton sunbird from goa uh, eating from a bottle brush flower this is again one of the uh, crown wood nymph uh, the name of the bird is crown wood nymph and uh, it's a hummingbird again and uh, it's similar to the bird which i've already spoken about the uh, uh, van hessel sunbird or the purple throated sunbird similarity again is in the iridescence the shining of the wings which is had and the, again the throat of this uh, crown wood nymph which you can see the glistening green again the light has to be in the perfect manner to reflect the green from all the feathers otherwise similar to the story of this purple throated sunbird the light has to uh, be in the perfect position and reflect from all the feathers otherwise it will look half purple half black similarly this the same case here so some more birds from my last year and some more interesting stories <clears throat> this is uh, a pair of uh, northern pintails from a beautiful beautiful wetland in our country near sikkim border is called the gajal doba wetland near you travel to bagdodra airport <clears throat> and then you uh, go to this wetland so uh, last february ha huh? yeah last february i had this trip planned because uh, as as i already mentioned i was uh, after the numbers and uh, last year was the year when i finally crossed 1100 and after 1100 as many people were talking how do i travel so as i already told that i have been doing it only mainly twitching these days so twitching saves me time also and uh, gets me rare birds also so this story i will tell about three four birds from here now so there were four target birds in gajal doba for me four different kinds of ducks and uh, i had given it 3 days because those all the four bird, uh, ducks were quite difficult in gajal doba also and only for a few month or two month maximum of 15 to 15 days to a month these all the four birds you can get in gajal doba so this was early feb and uh, this was uh, the in the background is the common golden eye which was one of my targets bird uh, lifers and then the foreground is the greater scop so i was blessed to see that both the two lifers in one frame and this was again one of my targets called the falcated duck again such beautiful green iridescence across its face and to get this kind of a shot is was my dream which i fulfilled these are again the two common golden eyes so these were the three ducks and there was one more coming and again there are two lifers in this frame also the first two birds are the common golden eye and the third one behind is the smew this one is the smew so i had planned for two and a half days of birding for thursday i did my work friday thursday late night i left from alabad after finishing my work and i had taken friday saturday off for completing this these th uh, four birds uh, so friday morning uh, i took a flight from uh, delhi and i reached bagdodra and friday evening i reached bagdogra and friday evening i started birding and i had almost four sessions of birding planned friday morning uh, friday evening saturday and then sunday and uh, i had four birds to target and luckily i got good photos and all the rare all the four birds in just two sessions and then i it uh, again my bird, uh, my friend sudeshna and one of my friends harish they were pushing me ki Uh, there is a rare duck called the long tailed duck which has only come to india after again maybe this is the only second sighting of that bird ever in india and last it was seen maybe 15 20 years back the called duck called the long tailed duck and uh, ironically it was seen in two places in india at the same time during the day uh, dates when i was traveling to gajal doba so i was itching to go for the long tailed duck but obviously this was a pre planned pre paid trip so i had i decided to focus on this because long tailed duck was a fairly difficult bird and i could have gone there and not got the bird also but since my luck was on my side and in just uh, one day of birding in gajal doba i got all the four targets so i changed my plan saturday 
Friday I completed this. Saturday, uh, I morning I, after the session I took a flight from uh, Bagdodra to Delhi, and uh, I called up Harish, my friend, that let's do the long tail duck. Now, now long tail duck at that time was in Srinagar. Uh, there was a uh, lake there, which my friends, Kashmir, Srinagar friends, uh, told us the location. And one duck was also seen in Pong Dam in Himachal, where my close friend Abhinav, Dr. Abhinav, he's also very, very close friend since almost a decade. He told he told that if you come, then I'll help you see the bird. And Pong Dam is such a huge dam. And if you ever visit that area, it's a, literally 10,000 is a less number, which I'm talking 10,000 ducks in the huge uh, Pong Dam and to see one duck was not easy. So after reaching uh, uh, Delhi airport at 7 p.m. on Saturday, me and Harish, we decided to drive to Pong Dam. 7 p.m. from the airport, we left and we drove. You People were asking me, how do I travel? So this was this is how I travel. I travel during the night when obviously you can't do birding except owling, which I'll talk about later. So... Uh, 12 hours we drove non-stop and because of there was no traffic we reached Pong Dam at 6 so I called up enough I'm there then then he joined us and then we saw this beautiful long tailed duck and uh, this is a very very rare sighting in India and finally I get to see this bird in Pong Dam and then as we were talking about lifers, so in Pong Dam, Abhinav helped me get uh, one, two or more lifers one was the American Pipit one was the Eurasian Skylark. This is again the long-tailed duck. So these, uh, sometimes uh, these ducks which migrate, so you, the, only the females migrate. So this long-tailed duck, there is the, there is no long-tailed in this duck because it's the female. Similarly, this mu is, and uh, the male is very, very different to this. This is again the female. Even the golden eye, if, uh, many of these ducks, only the female comes to India. Very strange and interesting again. So, uh, Sunday morning, we got the long-tailed duck. And now, there was one more ra rarity popping out on our uh, twitching and rare birds WhatsApp groups. And uh, like I told you about the red fel uh, red neck fellow rope, the story. So, there is one more bird much rarer than the red neck fellow rope. is the red fellow rope. Or, or also, the uh, called the red or the gray fellow rope. And again very very handful sightings of the red fellow rope all across the country and maybe less than five to ten times ever sighted in less than five times sighted in our country so there was this one red fellow rope which decided to come to sambar lake this year last year sorry and our friends and local birders from sambar lake including gaurav who helped us uh, who helped track the bird in the first thing and then obviously sh shared the location for us to go and click it so then Red fellow rope was one bird which I had missed 12 to 15, 13 years ago because once it had come to Nagpur and those time my MS exams were going on and obviously I couldn't do birding in exams. So my birder and birdner, birder partner then Kuldeep got a photo of that bird, the red fellow rope. And it since those last 12 years, it, I was itching to get to see the red fellow rope, but there was no, no very good sightings to be able to click it in the last decade. So then I, when I knew that this had come, I tried it to give a, uh, tried to give it a go. So from Sunday morning, from Saturday morning in Gajaldoba in West, uh, close to Sikkim to sat Sunday morning in Pong Dam in Himachal Pradesh, I decided to go to Jaipur, Sambar Lake to get the chance of the red fellow rope. So then uh, from, uh, after completing the birding on tw at 12 in the night, I drove directly from Pong Dam to uh, Sambar Lake and I reached Sambar Lake 2 in the night and then uh, my friend Gaurav, he helped me in birding and this is the red fellow rope which uh, in the Sambar Lake. So this is a slow motion uh, video that is why you can see it so beautifully. Uh, so fellow ropes are a wader kind of a bird which uh, does this specifically typical behavior of swimming and or waddling in the water. So this, this is a typical behavior of a fellow rope both the phalaropes, the red neck phalarope and the red phalarope and it hunts like this like you can see beautifully in here uh, so this I could take a sip of water and uh, another 5, 7 or 10 minutes max yeah, yeah. I'll wrap then we can up. have some Q&A, then we can have some Q&A with the participants I hope everyone's enjoying uh, and you know you're getting to understand a lot of things 
also get a uh, kind of window into the life of a surgeon who has passion for birding so you can you can take a career very high pressured career like surgery uh, you know medicine and yet have hobbies you know that's something that people don't understand how important it is to balance work and life i think arpit is a great example for that so continue arpit thank you so some more from 2000 23 uh, this is again the snow partridge the cover part image again in the snow this is the another nuthatch which i had showed initially a beautiful nuthatch image this is the indian nuthatch from prayagraj so this is a nuthatch species this is the indian paradise one of the most beautiful flycatcher species from india called the indian paradise flycatcher and this is comes in very interesting two moths. So if I keep talking, then I think we'll never be able to end, end it. So I'll go a little bit fast now. So this is again a beautiful bird called the lesser florican. Again, critically endangered. And uh, the behavior of jumping into the sky is like a, is, is the behavior to attract uh, the females. It's a display move. And uh, uh, this was clicked in a uh, place called... Uh, near Rajasthan, I'm for a called so a village called Songkhalia. It's a small village where amongst the Moong Dal fields, these birds are seen again during the monsoon. This is again one of the birds of the monsoon. One of the few birds. This I already have shown. This also I've already shown. This is the vernal hanging parrot. Again, I've shown again from Pune. This one again clinked in uh, one of my trips to uh, Chennai for some uh, work and I decided to take morning off. So again, so whenever you're doing, as a surgeon, whenever I'm traveling for conferences, I have birds across, uh, I have bird of friends all across the country in each and every city. So mornings, usually you're free. As a non-birder, you will waste your morning, you will laze around, you will spend the morning in the blanket. As a birder, I always it, make it a point to go birding. So and this was fortunate to see this uh, painted stalk, uh, stalk eating a, a snake. Now I'll quickly tell you my passion for owls. So owls have been my crazy passion. And uh, there are total 36 species of owls in India. And I have photographed 35 of them. Only one which is left is the Nicobar's corpse owl for which I have to go to Nicobar. This one is not from India. This is called the long-eared owl. And this, imagine, uh, this was a family Christmas trip to uh, Europe and this were uh, on the last day it was a Prague the standard itinerary Prague Budapest and Venice oh, sorry Vienna and uh, in the last day we were spending last one and a half days in Bratislava and somewhere I had read that Bratislava had a beautiful number of owls and the long eared owl was on a big target list that time and I was not carrying my equipment because since it, uh, we were, me my daughter and my wife Pooja we were traveling on a Christmas trip in during a Christmas weekend. Uh, so I read online through my contacts and randomly messaged somebody that I want to see owls. He told me that come in the morning, I'll take you. We went to a cemetery uh, and then uh, he, uh, me, my daughter, Arna and my wife, uh, Pooja was there. And this guy called Jan, his name was Han. He wrote it as Jan from Bratislava. He's a very kind person. He, came to show me these this owl in a cemetery inside a tree. So I could just see, see a random uh, side angle of this bird. And then he, that Jan, he, Han, he told me that there were two of them. Then my daughter, Arna, who was four years, three and a half years that time, she started crying. I told her to keep quiet. I told her, I'm seeing an owl, please don't make noise. Then she started shouting, Tata, where did you keep my binoculars? Then I, because of the noise and the commotion she created, 25 different long-eared owls flew from that tree where we were oh, standing wow. and seeing only two of them, that two in the bush. So 25 long-eared owls flying in all different angles, all across the symmetry in different trees. And then uh, this guy from Bratislava, he was kind to lend me his camera and this photo was from his camera. And he was very kind to then email me the raw files because I was not carrying my camera, as I told you. So thanks to him, I got this beautiful picture of the long-eared owl. This one was the last uh, owl which I clicked recently, 35th owl. In my third and third success, third and the final successful attempt at Sundarbans National Park. Sundarbans is a mangrove uh, national mangrove forest near West Bengal, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And 
but you require a lot of patience if you want to go there or you some people go there to see tigers also my target and one of my close friends sudeshna's target was only the buffy fish owl and after the she had gone five times it was my only third trip and luckily we got this this time this is the spotted owlet again clicked in prayagraj in flight this is the uh, oriental bay owl again if if i tell you stories about each owl then i don't think we'll be able to finish in time today so <laughs> I, I, uh, every owl has a special story this one is very close but i'll skip it this one again uh, is the barn owl very commonly found all across the country this particularly one is clicked in alabad and uh, to see a barn owl eating a house shrew or a house a rat was very special and i was lucky to capture it this was again a tawny owl very very rare owl this was clicked in uk but uh, this is i have photographed the same owl in india also in srinagar again by by the help of my srinagar friends this is the short eared owl from little run of kutch this is again a special one uh, spot belly eagle owl from kerala thattegard sanctuary kerala so for owling owling is a thing where you have to do birding in the night because owls are nocturnal creatures so you have to be active like them in the night and it is obviously the debatable that whether you should use flash so i good uh, photographers in the night they never use flash because flash uses a lot of high intensity and uh, uh, in a very less time of uh, time so it is definitely harmful for the birds so if you are doing owling all across the one it is justifiable uh, to use a little bit of torch light uh, and obviously not to disturb the owl for too long so maybe all what i do is usually i click and less than 20 to 30 seconds i use the light and i click and, and then i move on so this one is the spot bellied eagle owl this one is the himalayan owl again a very very special one stories maybe sometime later i'll tell you about owls this is the andaman scops owl only found in andaman only endemic to andaman this is the critically endangered the forest owlet clicked in melghat in maharashtra this is the tawny fish owl from uh, champi in uttarakhand near uh, satal near nainital this one i think i will tell the story because this is one is too special everywhere owl is too special so this one is the last of owl which i am showing today this is the eurasian scops owl this is again a passage migrant owl which only passes over india and sometimes it winters but nobody clearly knows and it so this one uh, owl this uh, eurasian scops owl has been erratic records in gujarat run of cards sometimes in jamnagar and uh, so, some nearby places so this time this came in uh, a place called udaipur everybody knows there, there is a good forest in the outskirts of udaipur and there uh, so from alabad i did this trip in less than 12 hours tw less than 24 hours again alabad is a very very bad connectivity and this owl had come so i had to go so i took my evening flight from alabad 4 o'clock by a connection i landed in udaipur at 7 p.m one stop flight 7 pm from the airport i directly uh, vardhan is a very close friend in udaipur who helped me get this owl in udaipur the directly from the airport we went to this forest and full night we were birding and we got luckily got the owl and then one in the night i said now i'm done i got good images so i decided now to come back early there was no direct flight from udaipur so i drove from udaipur to ahmedabad so this this is how i manage my trips because if i would waited to take a flight from udaipur one day of work was gone so uh, i drove from one uh, and my car got spoiled so i had to travel in a bus at 2 in the night so it was a, a very very interesting story all together again <clears throat> then finally i reached back in alabad in 1 12 in the morning so i continued my work so basically i didn't miss work but i still managed a very very rare species so now i'll talk about a little bit about ebird ebird is a online platform uh, ebird india as you can see on this website but uh, ebird.org is the site and in ebird india is definitely a part of it so where you can record your sightings there are ebird app also we can maybe hand, uh, have some different sessions with ebird i am also the ebird editor for my re up region where so 
people any random people can do birding and they can submit their observations they their photos their sightings and any photo which they you or anybody submits may uh okay keep in your lap you can take it beta i am taking a lecture then you keep this mango thank you so uh, uh or you can submit your recordings and volunteers like me they filter the recording so that this data who is submit who we are submit on ebert can actually be used used for science so this is anybody who is getting into birding should definitely get into ebert anybody needs help regarding that i would be very happy to help so this is uh, the ebert home page where one of my photos was featured so it gave me a motivation again one of my nagar and babler photos uh, got fe featured on ebert world page i'll uh, I'll just go through it and maybe show the my current profile from eBird recently. Or, or just a minute, I'll share it. Arpit, I can. I think we can quickly see the uh, Costa Rica pictures again because huh, last and then I'll show you the eBird if, if ah, time. Ah. This yeah. is some more from Costa Rica. This is a pair of crested owlets. This is again the keelbill toucan. This is again a scarlet rumped tanager, like the summer tanager. This is the summer tanager. This is the uh, scarlet rum tanager, uh, female and uh, male uh, fighting. Or this is the orange hooded parrot, which we I had spoken about. This is the crimson colored woodpecker, uh, one of the woodpeckers from South Af uh, from Costa Rica. This is again the colored arakari. This I have already shown. This is the green honey creeper. Again, a very small and colorful bird, the keelbill toucan. This is uh, again like the chlorophonia. This is a uh, euphonia. This is called the yellow broad euphonia. Same bird. This is one of the trogons which I got during my Costa Rica trip. The black headed trogon. This is again a pair of a kind of bird which you, we see in India also. These are called the swallows and very difficult to photograph them. And this one was very very amazing shot which I got. Is the mangrove swallow. This I've already shown. This is one of those pelag pelagic birds which I was talking about. This is called the magnificent frigate bird. So frig frigate birds fly in the sky like this and they usually are seen in the ocean. But these uh, frigate birds, uh, the, there was a nesting colony of this frigate bird near the sea on a boat ride in Costa Rica. What more I've shown this, I've shown. This is the orange hooded parrot which I was saying. So it has hidden red colors under its wings. Otherwise, it, the red does not seen in that photo, but you can see the wings under the red color. This is our I've already shown. This one is again green breasted mango, another hummingbird species. This one is long tailed hermit, again, a hummingbird species. Lovely. This is the rufous tailed hummingbird, again, a hummingbird species. This I've already shown the white neck Jacobin. This also I've already shown this bird. I'll, this is the last bird of this slide. Now, uh, this is the resplendent Quetzal. This is a star bird of Costa Rica. Anybody going to Costa Rica needs to see this bird. Brilliance in this feathers and to photograph it, a lot of trekking up and down was required, but finally this is the female and this is the male. I'll skip this. I think we don't have time for this. I'll show some basic bird watching screen. Huh? 10 simple beginner tips for anybody who's starting or who wants to start bird photography. So first point, you don't need expensive lens for great bird photography. Uh, you can do like I started with a very basic lens and some of these pictures, uh, which I showed you during the slide are from that era also. So definitely now I am holding one of the world's best camera and one of the world's best lens. But that doesn't mean that to start or to get a great picture, you need expensive equipments always. So important things is the quality and direction of light, the, how to know the what is from composition, as I already mentioned, the knowledge of the birds, the how what background you're getting, how to use the camera, then similar things. So then second point is the light and the composition. Soft light has some wonderful characteristics. So that is why you don't go photographing in, in 11 in the in afternoon. So you best photographs are there in mornings and evening light. When there's a golden light, that's why it's called the golden light because it brings the best colors of the birds, best colors of the uh, nature. Then you have to go uh, 
transport the viewer into the bird's world. So in bird photographs, suppose a, if a bird is sitting on the grow, ground, so you get more uh, perspective into the photo when you lie down and click. You lie down on the ground and click. So you go, or if you, the bird is high, then you try and get as high as possible. So eye level shot in bird photography is very, very important. And for any bird photo, as you might have seen all my photos, the eye has to be very sharp. It's all in the eye. If you take a look at any photo, what's the first thing you see? It's the eye. Definitely. So we tend to make a eye connection with any living and it's no live different with birds. So that is why. And the light in the eye is called the catch light. So there are uh, different... Ar Arpit, since there, there's going to be an entire detailed lecture on uh, basics of wildlife photography. Mm -hmm. So I think you can just head, go from the titles, let them get the basic titles. I, I, yeah, 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 just from the titles. So tell yeah. us, try to get a photo where you can tell a story from the bird. So this is, and obviously capture their behavior, action and behavior once you slowly, slowly keep doing. Most important thing in bird photography is you need to start and you need to keep doing. It's the skill which like uh, Bruce Lee also said, it is better to practice one kick thousand times than to learn thousand different kicks. So it, again, it's the thing which you need to practice, 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 practice. And for practice, you need not even travel. You can uh, do birding or photography or even start with birding in your own backyard, wherever you are. And as I was telling you about eBird, there are some back uh, every uh, events which happen in eBird, which will help you to uh, get into birding. Like there's a great backyard birding count happening in February. So anybody interested, please, uh, you can DM me. I will definitely share and uh, please get involved. Like even in our, I'm sitting in Allahabad, one of the most dull places in the country. And still in my garden, at least 15, 20 different species of birds come, different kinds of bulbul. Bull. So you, it is important to start. That's the thing. And you will definitely reach somewhere. Cap capture their magnificence and flight. We already spoke about it. Uh, once you start getting them, background makes the picture. See, there is if there is clutter in the background, then the picture will not look nice. So try to get planar backgrounds. How that will also matter. Ki bird ke piche kitni dur kya hai. So you have to maintain your distance accordingly. And as I already mentioned, practice with common birds. Practice is the important thing. This is some of my pictures uh, with my equipment. So sometimes you have to stand like this. Sometimes you have to lie down, lie down like this. This is this one is last one is from Ladakh. So thank you so much for patient hearing, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Arpit. Uh, you can stop sharing your screen. Take a sip of water. Yeah. Uh, and now we can have a we have another uh, seven eight minutes. Uh, Arpit has been speaking almost nonstop for two hours. So, uh, yeah. And I can carry uh, on for maybe uh, two more hours if you give, if you give me time because. <laughs> There's so many stories that I can't literally speak for forever. Absolutely. So what we can do is that, you know, we'll plan a trip sometimes that side so that we can have a more in-person, uh, you know, sometimes when we are coming towards or, maybe, or something. When I, when I come to Mumbai, sometimes I could be part of uh, one of your uh, tree walks where we can Absolutely. discuss a lot of things. And we can... So we might be having a wildlife trip to, uh, let's say, uh, something like Tudua or Katanya Ghat or something. Ah, yeah. So mm -hmm. we can have you, you know, join us uh, on of a day or two over there. I'd love to. I would love to. Definitely. So there was one question which was there earlier, uh, which was about have you in your trips seen any because of climate change uh, any major uh, migratory behavioral change a lot uh, of lot of people if i start talking about that i think i'll need at least one hour more to talk about that because there's been drastic change drastic means like i during all my trips wherever i go i only hear one story ki 20 saal pehle yahan ye dikhti thi 20 saal pehle wo dikhti thi jo birds humko abhi mil nahi rahi hai jo 20 saal pehle abundance mein dikhti thi and mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you now that one, you can look at it at a perspective ki, shit, yaar, hum saal late hum saal pehle hum milta humko kitni cheeze aur dik jati. But I think this is the time and be jitna mil raha hai, it's the time the time is now because 20 years later I will now tell these stories which I have witnessed as biodiversity of our planet and I will keep on witnessing. So 20 years later, I will be the one who mother people like me will be the people who will tell about these stories. The world is getting destroyed at a very, very drastic place. And I urge you 
people to please wake up because we have no planet B. And if uh, you're interested, you can listen to my TEDx talk, which is on the same topic. Uh, I've shared your uh, Instagram handles, both your personal handle and uh, uh, Arpit does very, very interesting talks about personal health, medical, uh, you know, uh, things in terms of, you know, cancer and other things. So you can follow him on his uh, Instagram one minute videos that he mentioned. Uh, I had a question, Arpit, for you that uh, how many times do you go uh, without a camera and how many times you go without a binocular? <laughs> uh, in nature? In, in field, yeah. In field, yeah. See, uh, very, very interesting question because uh, as I was telling, so I also found that because of uh, getting to the numbers, completing my 1000, then 1100, it became too much of uh, stress, a little bit of stress for me. And then I wondered that I got into birding and nature to be as a de-stressing hobby. So I can't let that be a stress. So uh, I, after 1100, I've decided to be content. And obviously I will keep on completing and I will, I hope my passion, I live long to complete my passion, but now slowly, slowly I've started making trips, more trips. And uh, here is my daughter, Arna. She is also into birding. I mean, she's Arna. six years old and uh, she's slowly, slowly getting into no birds. She knows a lot of, a lot about owls. Her first word incidentally was owl. So uh -huh. <laughs> my dad, her first word was owl. So uh, so the point I was saying that uh, it is uh, important to go into the nature uh, just like that also, just to observe nature. And especially now the count, especially in Indian birds, uh, I've reached at a level where I will not be raising count very easily. And I even five day trip, I will may, maybe just add one life or I'm, I may not. So it is important to observe bird behavior. It is important to observe how the habitats and what we can contribute as an earthian to uh, our saving our nature. So there's an interest, interesting uh, thing which I came across recently. Be a responsible earthian. And I urge everybody to add, whenever you write your address, you write your street, your house number, you write your street, you write your uh, uh, location, locality, then city, then state, and then obviously country. And in the, however you feel about our country, but I, I, in the end, you are always a proud Indian. Everybody here uh, listening to us, everybody we talk about, okay, we berate our government sometimes, ki ye nahi kar rahe, wo nahi kar rahe, garibi hai, khana nahi hai, paani achha nahi hai. But still, mm -hmm. we all are proud Indians. We, we all happily say. So if in that address, we add a line in the last called planet, mm -hmm. everybody, know, in, when you send to an address, everybody knows you live in India, but you still write a country India. So why do, don't we write planet and we write planet Earth? Right. That will bring a sense of responsibility towards our only planet. There's no planet B, remember. There's a young member, Tracy, he's asking you, uh, see mm -hmm. the curiosities of young people and older people are very different. So Tracy is asking you, how often do you go to a certain place to photograph and come back empty-handed without seeing the bird? Many, many, many times. So this is uh, a story which... Uh, mm -hmm. Life is about hits and misses. And obviously during my 1100, it's not a joke. So I have had thousands of misses and ultimately I reached to 1100. So, so birding has been a, my life actually months apart from being surgery. So it has taught a lot of things to me. It has taught of apart from patients. It has these small failures sometimes not of not getting a bird sometimes upsets you so much that you become you can go into depression also from these kinds of small failures. So birding has taught me this, that you have to rise and you have to keep on trying. So there is nobody in the world who can say, Ki, I go and I get the bird. Mera bhi lak achha hai, but mera bhi lak kharaab bhi hua hai hazaaro bar. Okay, Arpit, now the, just one last question. And I think your daughter is also telling you that she needs your time now. Uh -huh. So we'll conserve your energy uh, that way. Uh, Samir Bakshi has asked this question that uh, one, of course, superb talk. Uh, wanted to ask that what is your thought of co on call playbacks and the indiscriminate use that bird photographers do to get a photograph? Uh, audio very, very interesting playing? call. So yeah. as I already mentioned, uh, being a responsible earthian, being a responsible nature lover, being a uh, responsible bird lover, uh, it is important. See, bird calls sometimes it's a it's a debate which we can end go on endlessly. But what I feel about it, if you use it judicially, and you should be, wh whom why are we doing this for? We are doing to 
get more information get more curiosity get good pictures about nature yeah, so it yeah, should not yeah, be to disturb them and you will know when you are disturbing a bird anybody else will not know no forget about any who will judge you how will you judge you but you will know when you are disturbing the bird and believe me the happiness when you get when suppose you are cl- uh, clicking a raptor you crawl towards the raptor and you get a full frame shot and then the happiness is to crawl back and not make the bird fly that is the true happiness you can keep there are so many who keep crawling towards the bird until it flies that is not happiness that is not respecting nature and until if you don't respect nature then nature will not respect you back and nature is the only thing if you respect pat 100% it will respect you i think that's a perfect uh, note on which you know at, at dot at 7 o'clock uh arpit for you to close this that yeah we need to respect nature the reason that we do this lecture series is that uh, you know we want people to develop love to develop nature and we in fact have our next uh, year month's speaker and this is the poster of next month's talk uh, which is our wildlife of kashmir uh, tahir is among is there in the audience with us tahir kazanfar so uh, bye, thank bye. you thank you tahir yes. yeah so thank you so much arpit for this it everybody has said this that very very amazing stories very inspiring stories so please continue this work and uh, we'd love to you know be with you in field uh, everyone please follow uh, uh, thank you Arpit's so much uh, for literally patience here in and uh, every year i've been making a calendar and i've been coring it coring it to almost 1000 people across the country so this year also the calendar is there and only and last few copies are left so anybody who's interested a few people asked in the chat uh, about you know how to get a copy for their kids or etc so i uh, i've shared uh, uh, dr arpit's uh, you know uh, uh, so instead broadcast this yeah. message to everybody that anybody interested i will yeah. be happy to send this year's calendar free of cost just please send me your complete postal address on my instagram or on my uh, whatsapp number so thank you so much uh, and with that i think let's also uh, uh, you know respect dr arpit's time uh, please take uh, care of the planet as he said uh, one has to you know really uh, be very careful as to how you tread he said that the way you go in the, the same way you've got to come back don't leave break a necessary branches or leaves to take your photographs don't trample through things don't leave plastic or waste over there or as samir asked don't play callbacks or use flash photography to disturb wildlife our photography is as good as uh, you know for using it for conservation and for educating people right if we don't so while doing that uh, you know while as we he said about getting more numbers and being more famous and more followership then if we disturb the creatures then you know the earth is not going to be kind to us for our actions so let's to... let's let's be responsible yes sorry yeah yeah please so thank you so much everybody for so such a patient hearing thank you thank you